Hi, I'm Kristen from Upcycle My Stuff. And today I'm gonna to show you these three quilts uh, that I made recently. They were all backed with fleece. They're the first three quilts I've ever made with a fleece backing. Uh, it was pretty easy. Um, so uh, I'll give you my thoughts on that because I did try different things with each of them because it was the first time I've done it. So I thought, well, I'll try some, some slightly different quilting and binding and using batting and not using batting. So I can give you my thoughts on all of that. They were all made for Project Linus UK, so I'll tell you a bit more about that as well, and um, just generally let you have a look at the quilts. So behind me are three quilts. They're kind of um, baby to lap size quilts um, that I made for Project Linus UK, which here in the UK is a community interest company that donates uh, quilts to specifically to kids in the Sick Kids Hospital here. Uh, they also give some quilts to women's refuges and um, some other deserving uh, places where there are kids and people in need of a sort of little cuddly, warm gift to help them in their healing or their recovery or anything like that. Um, so I got in touch with um, Project Linus UK here. Project Linus uh, has branches all over the world. Um, I know they have them in the US, the UK and Canada because um, I've got a blog that I wrote uh, all about different places you can sew for charity in those three countries because um, most of my readers are in the States. I live in the UK and I can come from Canada so um, I wanted to include it all uh, and so I know that Project Linus is one of the ones that you can contribute to pretty much all over the world. So uh, I thought I'd just talk a little bit about my experience with making these quilts uh, and more specifically about um, the fleece backing because that's um, the thing about these quilts. It was totally brand new for me. I'd never used fleece as a backing. So I'm going to give you some beginner tips about that uh, and uh, just yeah, show you the quilts basically. <laughs> so um, I'll, I'll talk about it as I go. So this, um, first of all, they all are using the um, leftover, not leftover, um, the, the hexi block. So these blocks with all the hexagons the, that were probably English paper piece together. Uh, I bought them on eBay. I have another video about my haul of patchwork from uh, people who couldn't finish their projects. And this one was from a woman who's uh, had Alzheimer's and her daughter was selling these on eBay. So I bought the blocks off of her. Uh, and then and there were a lot of them, right? Uh, I've also got a video with some like teddy bear ones that I made into cushions. Originally, I thought I was going to put them all in one big like our spy quilt or something. But when I got them here and I looked at them, they didn't. The colors didn't all go together. The themes didn't all go together. So I decided to separate them out. So this is the first one. So I thought I'd show you some pictures of the quilts out in the garden because uh, it's hard to see the whole thing uh, in the sewing room. Let's see. So this is um, kind of pinks, maroon kind of colors. Um, and she had some ones with cakes and shoes and handbags. So I decided they kind of went together. Uh, and the woman at Project Linus recommended a particular kind of fleece, uh, anti-peel fleece, polar fleece. So that's what I've used on the back here. So I'll just pull those up there. And it was actually pretty easy to work with. Um, and I actually did, so all of these fleece back quilts I did slightly differently. So this one, uh, I quilted using, let me just show you, a decorative stitch from my sewing machine. So it like pre-does the leaves and I just did them in a kind of semi wavy random way. Um, Cause I thought that kind of tied together some of the themes of the quilt uh, and it was really easy to do um, came out really nice really really quick I think I quilted it in an hour or two it wasn't it wasn't a long time um, and this one I chose to bind with the fleece so I'd cut it bigger than the top itself in the same way you would if it was a regular quilt backing and then when I was thinking I didn't have the right kind of colors to bind this one so I thought I would rather than trim it straight up to the top I trimmed it, I think uh, it was something like an inch and a quarter or an inch and a half uh, and then folded it over. So I folded over the the raw edge 
So the raw edge hit here and then I folded it again and sewed along that. Um, and so that was pretty easy and obviously that's pretty economical. So this is the biggest one. Um, I'm not sure, I can't remember exactly what size it is, but I think they would probably call this one more like a teenager or a, a wheelchair quilt or something like that. Um, so this was the first one I did and I didn't use batting. So she told me not to use batting to just use fleece. She suggested that I use fleece for the backing and she had a particular kind, an anti-pill um, polar fleece. And she even told me where I could buy it in the UK, um, but you can buy it uh, lots of places and you can even find, I've since realized remnants on eBay, uh, especially if you're talking about like a child or a baby quilt, those kind of remnants might be exactly the right size. Um, no, but I'd never quilted with fleece before, so I wasn't sure how it was gonna go. Um, and it was actually really easy to work with. It was really, I spray basted it um, spray basting is not my favorite with batting, but with fleece, actually, it was, um, relatively straightforward and easy. Um, so that was a good surprise. Usually, um, with uh, traditional quilts, I've taken to kind of, um, wetting the fabric down, ironing it down, and then using those curved pins. So it's a little bit laborious <laughs> and, uh, down on my knees. Um, basting is not my favorite. Um, but for these, it was actually relatively easy and simple. So, but I decided I was going to try three different ways. So it was sort of self-binding, I guess is what you would call this. Um, and the kind of decorative stitch from the machine for this one and no batting. And then I moved on and did this one. So let me move this over. This one is a little bit smaller than that one. Um, let, me, let me hold it up, hang on. So, and this one she had, so the two blocks in the middle are what I got from that eBay patchwork haul. So there's one with turtles and one with zebras or zebras, depending where you come from. And I just thought they went well together, um, but there weren't enough of them to make sort of a whole quilt, so I added the edges and the borders on top, just scraps and remnants and things that coordinated no pattern. I just, uh, I guess it's like a log, log cabin or a courthouse steps. I'm not good with my traditional block names, uh, but you can kind of see how it goes together. It's pretty simple. Um, and so for this one though, um, one, you can see I found it with quilting cotton. Two, um, I did use batting uh along with the fleece and three i did some really simple free motion quilting so just these kind of triangle naive triangle shapes kind of thing uh and this one's my favorite of the three so i think it's much cuddlier and cozier with the extra layer of the batting i think it makes the quilting look nicer also turn the back um obviously it's going to depend what Sort of climate you're in whether or not you really need batting and obviously she told me i didn't need batting it wasn't that they didn't want batting but they're trying to help the people who are making these quilts to spend as little money as they can so um and they think it's warm enough and cozy enough with just the fleece so i think that's why they say no batting um but this one i've done with the batting and i i quite like it and so in terms of ease of using the fleece again um, with the free motion quilting, so with the fleece, the batting, and the top, still no problem. And I just used a regular quilting needle. It's nothing special, no special thread. Um, so it was really easy to use. Um, and then I just did a scrappy kind of a binding. It's just different, um, different two and a half inch strips of um, black and white, sort of to kind of tie in the zebra guy in the middle. So that's that one. And then the last one. Was this one. And this one is just one of her blocks in the middle. It's got, you can't probably really see it. It's got 
butterflies of various colors. So that's where I was getting the colors from. So I'll hold it up. So that's the block. And I just, again, use strips that I have, scraps that I have to go round and round to make it the size. So this one is definitely a baby size. So it's, um, again, I can't remember exactly what the measurement was, but she did say that they take pretty much any size. Um, there was a really small, like, um, incubator size which I didn't do um basically because I thought that's probably one of the most popular ones because it's the smallest and it's for the cute little babies um so I thought that I'd make some of the slightly bigger ones so this could be for a baby or a, a toddler or a small child or something I think I like the colors in this the most um but uh I don't like my quilting <laughs> in this one I did um some more free motion but it was just I was a bit tired and I'm just not super in love with how it came out. It was uh, kind of a, I don't even know what you'd call it, a really large stipple or something. Um, but again, it was easy to use. This one, I didn't use batting. Um, oh, I'll show you the back. That'll show, show you the closer. Um, there it is. And I did, so I didn't use batting for this one. And I had this these orange strips, which I thought coordinated, so I did like a regular binding for this as well. So I think personally, although the sort of self binding one for this worked okay, I think I prefer <laughs> to do the traditional way, but I do really like, even though I don't love my own quilting design in this one, I do really like how the quilting stands out on the back of all of these. So this one, even the one, so this one, I used exactly the same color thread. Uh, so it's that wine color. And you can just see it's it just gives a really nice pattern on the back um and often you know sometimes when you're quilting the front of something it doesn't always look as amazing quilted on the back but i think with the fleece it really does um and so the gray ones i used a contrasting stitch color so if this one's the green and the other one it was the orange so i quite i quite like that and they are cozy and comfy so um a few things though to to say about fleece while I'm folding these up. So one is at first glance, first research, um, it does seem really eco-friendly because most fleece is made from recycled plastic bottles. So that sounds great, especially to someone who likes upcycling. I was like, oh, that's bad. But we actually had a woman from Project Linus on our Zoom call for the quilt group that I'm in. Uh, come and talk to us so after I'd made these, after I knew, you know, after I'd bought the fleece for this and used them. Um, and she was telling us all about how they liked fleece backing and stuff. And uh, someone else on the call said, oh, well, what about, how do you square that with the environment? What about the microbeads from the plastic that the fleece is made of washing out into the oceans and getting into, you know, everybody's water system and things like that. So, I hadn't thought of that, to be honest. Um, so I did a little Googling afterwards. Um, and sadly, it turns out that, you know, almost everything that we wear and buy, uh, if you wear polyester clothing or any kind of synthetic materials and you wash them, that's going to be the case. You're going to be washing out some microbeads into the water system. Same with things like shampoos, which I, I knew that before. Um, uh, because lots of the stuff we use is made of plastic, sadly. Um, but I did find that you can buy a filter for your washing machine. I'll put the link below. I am not sponsored. I've got no affiliation with them, nothing. Um, that you would attach to your washing machine. And then it kind of, uh, it says that it reduces 90% of those plastics from washing out. So if that's something you're concerned about with fleece or any other material, that might be something to look at. So... I just thought I'd mention that in full disclosure, because um, if you're watching this, you might be looking for the, the kind of sustainability angle for that. So anyway, that was, that's my adventure in fleece quilting. Um, I was sad to hear about that, um, uh, that it wasn't totally an eco-friendly eco fabric because I really liked working with it. <laughs> um, so I'm kind of debating whether it would be better if I bought, um, you know, good quality secondhand fleece blankets um you know the other people are just getting rid of because they're changing their decor or whatever uh and maybe using that they've probably already been washed 
maybe a lot of that, um, you know, that harm's kind of been done and you're kind of stopping the production of new fleece. Not sure. So I'm still debating that and happy for you to debate in the comments and give me your thoughts. Um, but those, but in terms of working with the fleece itself, um, I found it really easy. It was easy to cut. It was easy to baste. It was easy to quilt with. Um, and so I don't think you need any special tools, needles, threads, nothing. Um, just have a go if you happen to have uh, some fleece or you find some sort of a remnant you want to use it's really pretty easy um, and you'll find the links again in the description for um, Project Linus as well as my blog post that has like a whole list of different things you can sew for charity so not just quilts uh, so there's a few places that need quilts um, there's also uh, charities that want you to make um, school bags for kids um, bags for personal belongings for patients, uh, lots and lots of different things you can sew for charity if that's something that you're interested in doing. Um, so I'd encourage you to look those things up and I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, please do subscribe, um, hit the bell for notifications and yeah, just leave me a comment. And let me know what you thought. Okay. Uh, see you again soon.